Well, hey there. Welcome. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about gargoyle geckos. You'll notice that we snuck them into this video, which if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. Maybe, maybe not right now, but now actually check it out right now, then come back. You're back? Good. Okay. Nice to have you back. Gargoyle gecko. You'll notice we, we did a video on the top five best pet reptiles for beginners, and there were six different species on there. There were six different species because honestly, gargoyle geckos and crested geckos are really, really similar. They're very, very closely related to one another. Today, more than anything, we're gonna try to highlight the differences between them. We've already done a video on crested geckos. You can check that one out too. But overall, we give gargoyle geckos a score. <laughs> we give them a score of Four out of five, which is the same score that we gave crested geckos, but we do give them this score for different reasons than we gave crested geckos a four out of five. As always, those reasons are our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. First off, let's talk about handleability. For handleability, we give these guys a score of 4 out of 5. The main reason they're not getting a 5 out of 5 is because they're small and could potentially be injured in a fall or if they're squeezed too hard, say, by a small child. That's always a concern for any small reptile. Honestly, any reptile, but especially for smaller reptiles. And that's a concern that they share with crested geckos. Something else that they share with crested geckos is the fact that they can drop their tail, which is something I always worry about but I worry about it a little bit less with gargoyle geckos than I do with crested geckos for one very simple reason. They can grow the tail back. Look at that adorable little micro tail, this goofball here. You can see these two, uh, they've never dropped their tails. This gecko has dropped her tail three times. Never when I've been handling her, just every now and then I'll come and check on her in her enclosure and <coughs> tail's gone and it's gonna be new tail time. She usually grows it back. I've never seen her get it all the way back before she drops it again. They can regrow the tail. It won't be quite the same. For one thing, they tend to replace the bone inside of it with a rod of cartilage. And that means it's generally not quite as flexible. Though I have found their tails to be pretty flexible still. And in my experience, when they regrow their tail on this particular species and some of the other New Caledonian geckos, it looks very, very similar to the original tail. And if it grows long enough, it looks pretty convincingly similar to the original tail. One real difference with the tails on these guys versus the the crested geckos is the tail is not nearly as prehensile, which means they don't seem to grab stuff with it nearly as much as a crested gecko does. And a crested gecko has a little toe pad like they have on their toes at the end of the tail. And these guys may have that a little bit, but it's way smaller. Good jump. I was going to brag about how calm these geckos are. And they are pretty calm, but they're, they're being a little bit high for me right now. Gargoyle geckos, in my experience, are calmer than most crested geckos. Now, if you watched our crested gecko video, you'll know that I have one crested gecko that is super duper calm. All of my gargoyle geckos are about as calm as he is, and I really like that about them. So in a lot of ways, they're better to handle than a crested gecko, but they're not perfect to handle, and they're not perfect to handle because they're still small, they're still delicate, and they still could drop that little tail of theirs. When it comes to care, we give these geckos a score of four out of five. They're gonna need daily maintenance. And that is the biggest reason why they don't get a score of five out of five. One of the main things is you're going to have to spray them every day, morning and evening. Just enough so that there are water droplets for them to drink, not so much that it soaks the enclosure, certainly not enough so that the enclosure stays wet all the time. You want it to dry out in between nestings. Every other day or so, you're going to need to feed them. And that's just something that you have to do on a regular basis. Something you need to keep in mind if you're gonna go on vacation or something like that. Unlike snakes, which you can arguably leave for a week at a time, you can't do that with a gargoyle gecko or a crested gecko. You're gonna need somebody to come by and feed it. And that can be a little bit of a cost. A little bit of a, a reason why they might not be ideal for you depending on your lifestyle. They're going to eat the same kind of food that crested geckos eat. That's going to be crested gecko diet, and if you don't know what crested gecko diet is, it's the greatest thing in the world to feed to a reptile because it comes in a bag of powder, and it'll keep for a long time, and you just take a little bit out and you add about uh, the same amount of water to it. In fact, you can vary it up depending on how paste-like you want it to be, but you just add a little water and you kind of stir it together and you put it in a little cup and they come and they drink out of it. And in my experience, gargoyle geckos 
eat this even better than crested geckos do, even though it's called crested gecko diet. In my experience, gargoyle geckos do not like insect feeders as well as crested geckos do. And I've got some crested geckos that will not touch insect feeders, but none of my gargoyle geckos will. I know there are gargoyle geckos out there that do eat insect feeders. Mine, even as babies, won't touch them. When it comes to hardiness, again, they're basically exactly the same as crested geckos, and we give them a score of three out of five. When it comes to handling, that's one of the things that could really hurt them. So if you want to kill a, a gargoyle gecko, which you don't, rough handling would be a really fast way to do it. Don't do that to them. Be very careful with them when you handle them. They're very soft and delicate. Humidity is another thing that can kill them. If you're not giving them enough, if you're not spraying them daily, then they could die of dehydration after a little while. Not immediately, but after a fairly short amount of time. Also, if you're keeping their enclosure just soaked all the time, they could end up getting a respiratory infection, which could actually cost them their life as well. Temperature, though, just like with crested geckos, that is the thing that you're going to want to be the most careful with. Because if these geckos get out of, say, the high 70s into the 80s and 90s, they could die in a very short amount of time. I love that they do so well at room temperature, but high temperatures are something that you need to avoid. They do tolerate human mistakes better than a lot of creatures do, and I, I really appreciate that about them. That's why I would recommend them for a new reptile keeper. You, of course, need to give them the basic necessities of life, but they can handle a little bit of you figuring things out. When it comes to availability, we give these a 3 out of 5. These are not as available as a crested gecko. You can get them at expos, you can get them from breeders, you can get them online. It's very rare that you would find them, say, in a pet shop. Even if you go to a reptile expo, you're going to see probably 25 crested geckos for every gargoyle gecko they've got there. So gargoyle geckos are much less common, which can be a really cool thing, right? Because everybody and their dog has a crested gecko, but who do you know with gargoyle geckos? They're, they're just a little bit different. I really like the look of them. They look a little bit different than, than crested geckos, but they're harder to find. There are lots of great breeders though because they're just about as easy to breed as crested geckos. Most of them tend to be some sort of brown, gray, and black. They come in kind of banded colors or striped colors. You can see oranges and reds and yellows on them. There's a lot of colors out there and if you're willing to pay enough you can get some really cool looking gargoyle geckos. In my opinion, even the blandest gargoyle gecko is really neat because they've got kind of a, a mossy camouflaged appearance and I really like it. A little bit less variation, a little less variety available in gargoyle geckos, but still a lot. And frankly, they're so much different looking than crested geckos that even the blandest gargoyle gecko is pretty new, different, and exciting. When it comes to upfront costs, we give these a 5 out of 5. If you go to a breeder or an expo, which are the main places that you're going to be able to find one, you're going to find that they're a little bit more expensive than the cheapest crested geckos you can get. But they're still not very expensive. The cost of the animal is very, very reasonable, and I love that about gargoyle geckos, because even the coolest looking ones out there are going to be within the, a reasonable budget for an animal like this. And their enclosure also is not going to cost you an arm and a leg. For one thing, it doesn't need any sort of special lighting or heating. Uh, they do best at room temperature. And so any lights you have in there might only be for if you have live plants in there or if you just want to be able to see them well. But you've got to be careful that those lights don't put off too much heat. So in general, you might not be using any lights at all. And that's great because that doesn't cost very much. Their enclosure isn't going to cost very much because Though a bigger enclosure is better, they don't need a huge enclosure to thrive. Once again, our overall score for these geckos is a 4 out of 5. They're fantastic, and there's a good chance it could be the perfect pet for you. As always, we're grateful that you've been here with us. Like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. When it comes to upfront costs... Whoop. <laughs> good catch, you. These guys may have that a little bit, but it's way smaller. Good jump, because she's a nut. You all right there? You don't need to do that. But overall, we give gargoyle geckos a score. <laughs> There's going to be a jump. Good jump. You can always tell when they put those legs forward. It's hopping time.